Transportation is so superb. The level of accommodation is better. Very close to the prophet Moses. I felt I should still be here to still worship more. The changes have been so magnificent, so incredible. Medina was a wonderful experience. It exceeded our expectation. For me, the ICV scheme is something which we must start. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another edition of the program as you answer the call. I am Binta Magaji. While striving to comply with preventive measures against coronavirus pandemic, prayers to Allah for divine intervention is also inevitable. Now to our program. Establishing a Hajj saving scheme in Nigeria is among the key priorities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. The justification for the scheme is the ease with which Hajj will be made possible and affordable for many Nigerians. Tonight, we revisit the Hajj saving scheme and the focus is on the efforts being made by the management of NACON for its takeoff. Details of this in our Spotlight segment. Also in the program, we have other regular segments including the NACON News Diary, which features the activities of NACON chairman, key functionaries of the commission and other stakeholders. These are more shortly after the break. Thanks for being there. We begin the program with a news diary as presented from our studio. The chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, al Haji Zikrullah Kule Hassan, has said that the commission has put the necessary safeguards in all the financial transactions undertaken with service providers. The chairman stated this while answering questions from Daily Trust reporters. al Haji Zikrullah assured all state and FCT boards that there is no cause for alarm with regards to payments made because they were done through Nakan. He then advised intending pilgrims and tour operators to respect the decision of Saudi government, saying no loss is bigger than the state of health and security of citizens. He then urged them to pray against COVID-19 and accept it as an act of God. The NACOM boss added that the Commission will continue to monitor global development on COVID-19 and will work in tandem with global best practices at all times. Muslims have been urged to heed appeals on the precautionary and preventive measures being taken by governments across the world against the COVID-19 virus. General President of the Grand Mosque and the Prophet's Mosque, Sheikh Abdurrahman al sudais gave the advice in Makkah. Sheikh Sudais said Muslims should be patient and stay at home as instructed, stressing that cooperating with governments and being disciplined to help in saving lives. The Sheikh added that people should not panic and should always rely on reliable sources for information about the coronavirus. Alhamdulillah, if you just tune in, in the program is as you answer the call, a public enlightenment presentation on the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. The intention of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, is to make Hajj affordable for Nigerians. To achieve this goal, the Commission is putting in place a number of strategies, one of which is the establishment of a Hajj Savings Scheme. What is a Hajj Savings Scheme? How does it operate? And what are the advantages for pilgrims and Hajj administration in Nigeria? Answers to these questions and more in our next segment, Spotlight. <laughs> Plans to establish a Hajj Seven scheme by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, are at advanced stage. This will, however, be preceded by the composition of a board of trustees by the federal government before the takeoff. The board will be saddled with the responsibility of managing the funds. 
The issue of constituting the Board of Trustees was part of the briefing made by Nakan Chairman Alhaji Zikrullah Kulle Hassan to President Muhammad Buhari when he visited the State House recently. We still await um, your kind approval of the composition of the Board of Trustees of the Hajj Savings Scheme. It is when we have an Hajj Savings Scheme that the going to Hajj of poorer people can be made easier. This is commendable, especially now that the recent global events have impacted our economy. Such savings will be timely and most welcome to the pilgrims as well as to Nigeria's economy. While Nakan awaits the composition of the scheme's board of trustees, it is in talks with relevant partners that will drive the scheme. Recently, the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria and the management of Taj Bank, led by its managing director, Norfede Lizan Abdurrahman, discuss about partnership to promote the Hatch Savings Scheme in Nigeria. The savings itself will be fundamental to even achieving the very purpose of Hajj. We are already in the process of getting approval from the appropriate government authority to start the high savings scheme. We hope very soon we will be able to uh, be out of it and then get the appropriate partnership with uh, those of you uh, who have similar aspirations with us. At the appropriate time we will be open to a partnership in this regard. But I believe on a long term solution uh, an effective hedge fund for Nigeria is inevitable. That is also one way that we can come in in a big way to lend our network and resources to help the Hajj Commission to accumulate funds for from uh, not just the current pilgrims but the far future pilgrims because Everybody saves to go to Hajj. The Act establishing Nakan mandates is to establish a Hajj savings scheme, which will make provision for gradual payment of Hajj fares by prospective pilgrims. And that is one thing that we will work with the federal government of Nigeria, particularly with our purposeful leader, the president, President Muhammad Buhari, to ensure that our savings scheme is allowed to come to life so that with it we can also use it as a way of alleviating the plight of so many people who want to go to Hajj yet who cannot afford the sum in a lump sum. We recognize the fact that majority of those who go on Hajj are actually the poor committed Muslims. Some have to sell all they have so that they can do Hajj. In fact some do borrow which is against the tenet of Islam, but still they want to go. To some, that's the only dream they have before they die. We do not think we should continue this. And that taking a Hajj is significant, it's enormous. We are talking of 1.5 million Naira. I don't know how many people can cover out 1.5 million Naira easily. So basically the scheme is supposed to provide a window for Nigerian, ordinary Nigerians to be able to save towards performing Hajj. And a scheme like that would certainly generate a lot of resources. Now for the individual, for the Hajj, I mean for the Hajj who is going to be attending Hajj, mm -hmm. the first most important uh, function of the scheme is to provide that window, that leverage, that platform that will allow him save gradually, depending on his own capacity. The idea for a savings scheme is not only to make it easy for the poor to make it to Hajj, but also to transform the life of the poor by making it possible for them to have access to finance to undertake small-scale businesses as practiced in other countries. Let me give you an example of the Malaysian Tabun Hajj. The Malaysian Tabun Hajj, they only have an allocation of 20, 25,000 pilgrims per annum against Nigerians 95,000. And the total number of depositors they have is 2.3 million. While Nigeria were targeting 10 million. Mm -hmm. But even with this profile, they are able to generate enough money. And this money are deployed 
And of course, if you look at the profile of Tabun Hajj, they have investments in 200,000 acre plantations. They employ 580,000 workers. They have 12 factories that process the output of those plantations. Mm -hmm. The Tabun Hajj own two successful Islamic banks in Malaysia. They have a very successful IT company. They have investments even in IDB. They have various all IPOs that you find in Malaysia, they have investments there. So what I'm saying is the kind of resources that are going to be generated will be so enormous that the impact will be very much on the Nigerian economy. Similarly, a Hatch 7 scheme in Nigeria can have positive impact on the funding and operations of Nakan and the conduct of the entire Hatch exercise. This means it will create a system through which the entire Hatch processes can be seamlessly and effectively managed. This scheme is going to create a platform for it to have a very seamless management of Hajj affairs. You know, you now know the people, the number of people you have under your scheme, you know how many are traveling, you can now plan better for them. Mm. And of course, even the Hajj uh, Commission itself will partake in the income that is going to be generated. So it will also enhance their own internal revenue generation capacity. Part of the profits that are going to be made from the investment will be shared between the depositors and the, 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 the other stakeholders. So the Hajj Commission is also going to benefit from this scheme. A good Hajj saving scheme can be used for sustainable economic development. It can also be a vehicle for nation building by creating investment opportunities in critical sectors of the economy. And the most important benefit is going to go to the economy. Because this is going to be an intermediation avenue where billions of uh, uh, Naira is going to be generated. This money is going to be there for investment purposes. They are going to be deployed to the economy. You know, a number of these infrastructural projects, a number of government uh, projects can be financed through this. The Hard 7 scheme is now being recognized globally as the modern and robust platform of making gradual and convenient payment for Hajj, where the less privileged could build up funds over time. One key issue for the success of the scheme is adequate enlightenment, particularly to the Muslim Ummah, on the need for patronage when the seven program comes on stream. The question of establishing a Hajj 7 scheme in Nigeria is not in doubt, as the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan, is working hard for its takeoff anytime soon. Masha Allah, you're still watching as you answer the call. Coming up next is Making the Hajj. Muhammad Nadine, Nadine. Walking between the mountains of Safa and Marwa, otherwise known as the Sa'i, is one of the pillars of Hajj and Umrah. How and when are pilgrims expected to perform this rite? Should they start with Safa or Marwa? What supplications are pilgrims expected to make when performing the Sa'i? Tonight, on Making the Hajj, Imam Yaqub al Hassan answers these uh, and other actually, questions. Sa'i technically refers to the movement of a pilgrim from the hill of Safa to the hill of Marwa seven times as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in the Holy Quran in Safa wal Marwa min sha'air Allah فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوِي تَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَدَّوَّ فَبِهِمَا وَمَنْ تَدَّوَّ أَخَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pilgrims whoever is on Umara rites or haji uh, performing haji is prescribed for him to perform sa'i in haji and umara sa'i is a pillar when are pilgrims expected to perform safa and marwa and which one are they supposed to begin with after the wap then the, the, the a pilgrim is expected to proceed after the two rakats after drinking zamzam then to climb 
following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu it was reported that when the Prophet Sallallahu completed his Dawah, he followed, he climbed, he started from Safa. He climbed the hill of Safa. And he turned and faced Kaaba. And he raised up his hand and he supplicates toward the Kaaba. He started by doing Takbir. You know, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. and then he is it's advised uh, you know it's recommended also for one to recite the surah of uh, the, the the chapter two verse one fifty eight of surah al Baqarah إن الصفاء والمروة من شعائر الله ومن حج البيت أو إتمر فلا جناه عليه أن يتلو فبهما ومن تلو أخيرا إن الله شاكر عليم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, أبدأ بما بدأ الله به. I will start from what I will begin from what Allah سبحانه وتعالى began with. That is in the safa والمروة. So it is one must follow the real procedure. You have to start from safa. How many times are pilgrims expected to walk between Safa and Marwa? What happens when pilgrims lost count in the course of Sa'i? Movement to Marwa, you will count as one. Some pilgrims, here yeah, I would like to call the attention of some pilgrims, used to go and come back thinking that it is like Nawaf, that they will count going and come back as one. No, going is one, coming back is two. Then you go three, you come back four. You go five when you come back six. So when you start from Safa, you will find yourself after completing the seven one, you will find yourself in Marwa. So if for any reason you are in doubt, is it seven or six or five or seven, you are expected to build upon the lower if you are. But if you are doubting is if it is higher, for example, after completing the seventh, you, 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 are, you started thinking that maybe it's nine. There is no harm. But if you are thinking of uh, if it's five or seven, then you are to put it as five. Located at the valley of Safa and Marwa is the green lights. So Hajara started moving. She went on uh, Mount Safa to look for water. She climbed the hill thinking that she will at least see water or some people so that to, to you know to get a, a help to and meanwhile looking at her child and she came down from Sapa and moved down to uh, uh, Marwa she also climbed the Mount Marwa and looking also for any uh, you know at least if she can get assistance or she can uh, find a water uh, find water so in the case of that when she is in top of the, the hill, she used to, you know, she would see her son lying down there and she is contented. But coming down within the valley, she cannot see her son. That was what made her hasten a little between a, a particular place to another. That was why it is made as a, a sunnah for us. On reaching, it is now, we are having now, a, you know, a marker, a green light to show a pilgrims that from this place to the next um, you know, marker, you are expected to follow that sunnah of our predecessors. And um, it is only recommended for men. Women are not supposed to you know, move, um, you know, jog from the pillar to the next pillar. That means the, the green light. Is it allowed for a pilgrim to perform sa'i on behalf of another? So many scholars are of the opinion that another person will not do, you know, cannot do it uh, for you in terms of prosy, as you mentioned. Uh, except some scholars are of the opinion that because of the hadith that Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu permitted one to perform haji, entire haji for an old age person or someone that is in a critical uh, you know, condition 
that no hope, no, no, you know, for him to go for Hajj. When a woman asks that her, her father even died, even someone, uh, so it seems the Prophet Sallallahu permitted one to do the entire Hajj for someone. So some of the scholars are of the opinion. For example, if, if one is performing Hajj and is com co coming to you know to Sa'i after performing his tawaf and before Sa'i something critically happened to him in such a way that he cannot do it so the next thing is for someone to carry him and do it with him either by pushing him on a this wheelchair or someone can can you know carry him along to do it with him but for someone to do to say okay you sit down some scholars are of the, except of course if he cannot regain again and he cannot be carried on the chair again to perform such things what about women who are in their menstrual period woman after for example completing her tawab moving down to sai area and she observed that uh, she started uh, her period of menstruation. She can, there is no harm for her to complete her sa'i. Uh, her he does not, but actually it is recommended if you are able. But if it's a menstrual period, it is tawab that is strictly forbidden for one to perform without uh, ahara or ablution. What is the status of a pilgrim who failed to perform the sa'i? Some scholars are of the opinion that it is wajib or sunnah mu'akada is sunnah. So therefore, they are of the opinion that something um, like sacrifice, penalty, in the absence when one is not able to complete his sa'i for a reason, acceptable reason by Islam, some scholars are of the opinion he is to slaughter a sheep as a penalty for that. But some scholars are of the opinion that without sa'i, the umara or hajj is not uh, complete. Imam Yaqub al Hassan says the next thing expected from pilgrims after completing the walk between Safa and Marwa is to cut their hair or shave it. But for women, just a small length of strands of the hair will do. Welcome back. Up next is the quiz. <laughs> Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, what does the word Zamzam mean? The correct answer is, stop flowing, stop flowing. The winner is Amina Haruna from Yola, Adamawa State. She provided the answer ahead of others. Amina Haruna will be contacted on how Nakon will reach her with the prize she won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. For this week, the question is, Mention the three persons whose history is associated with the Zamzam water. I repeat, mention the three persons whose history is associated with the Zamzam water. Text your answer to the number shown on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Now, let's take some messages from our viewers. <laughs> Abdullahi Bailey from Kano State sent in the first message. It reads, I would like to appreciate the efforts of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakhon, in making Hajj affordable for Nigerians. Amina Shaibu from Ondo State sent the second message. The message says, My prayers are with the world. May God see us through this coronavirus crisis. Amin. You too can send a message through our mobile number and other social media platforms. Remember, you can stop the spread of coronavirus by complying with all preventive measures. Let's support our government in the fight against coronavirus. That's it on this edition of the program as you answer the call. Join me same time next week for another package. Good night and thanks for watching. <laughs>